So let's begin. I want to say thank you for joining us for this business enterprise information session. I'm Tanya, the head of content, and uh, the business enterprise program actually sits within our content team. And we're very excited to launch this because it's aligned to two of our major priorities. One, which is to grow local screen businesses. And the second is to create opportunities for above the line local practitioners. And our aim for this business enterprise program is to create commercially viable local screen businesses um, to increase the volume of production for uh, the national and the global markets, to increase local IP uh, retention, to increase opportunities for those above the line talent and the growth and employment of those companies. Now, we're working with experienced advisors, 113 Partners, uh, led by Ian Murray, who is also on screen. Um, Ian has been instrumental in shaping the Screen Australia Enterprise um, Business Enterprise Programs. And so with us, Ian will be helping us with the assessments and the administering of the program. So for this session today, Ian will take us through a PowerPoint, the ins and outs of the program, and then you'll be able to have your questions in the chat and Ian and I will be able to answer them. So over to you, Ian. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll just bring up on screen this PowerPoint so we can sort of just work our way through it all. Um, firstly, I'll just sort of introduce who everybody is going to be. Actually, I get Tanya maybe to talk to, to the people who uh, who you'll be dealing with it day to day at, at, at Screen Queensland. Yes. So um, uh, Dr. Belinda Burns overlooks a few different teams and one of which is content. Um, then there's myself. And then I work closely with Phil and Ian, who are content directors. Uh, not to be confused with this Ian that is talking. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you everybody um, for, for coming today. It's great to see so many participants, um, really great numbers. Over the next 12 or so slides, we're gonna take you through the objectives of the program, what funding and support's available, what the eligibility criteria and application requirements are, um, a bit of an overview of the sorts of activities that can and can't be funded, uh, the application process itself, the assessment criteria, and then finally the, the terms and, and the mechanics of the funding. So we'll, we might just dive straight in. As Tanya was talking about, the overarching goal of this program is to increase the volume of Queensland created and owned intellectual property generated by local screen creatives in the state. And to take that down to a little bit more detail, there's sort of five areas there I suppose to talk to. So as we say, increasing the, the local volume of, of, of um, a retained intellectual property by Queensland businesses. And that comes about from a number of different types of things. So firstly, increasing the number of commissions which are coming into the state from broadcasters, networks, streamers, other platforms. And then in order to drive of that demand, making sure that there's an increase in the range and number of projects which are in development by local Queensland businesses. How that manifests in terms of the type of businesses that we're then working with, for early stage businesses, businesses which are fairly early in their trajectory and career or in, in their establishment, the program's really there to, to, to help them with, with access to resources, so helping them with cash flow, with helping them build their sites, developing capabilities and things like that. For more established businesses, so businesses which have been around for a while and and, and you know have, have been had some success in in, in already been establishing themselves, then the program's really encouraging them to, to find new areas to expand into with a, a real focus on innovation and diversification of, of their business models. The funding which is available, well, there's two things which are available as part of the as the end of this enterprise program. There is grant funding of up to $150,000 per year, and that can be for up to three years, but it is subject to meeting reporting requirements and, and achievement of milestones and things like that. And we'll go into some specifics of how that's going to work a little bit later in the presentation. And then secondly, for the successful applicants, there's also going to be a training um, program which will be curated to each of the individuals and that training and, and scaffolding will really be designed based around the activities which the companies are undertaking and where the applicant company is actually at or business is up to in, in terms of their career and, and trajectory as well and where they're at in their, in their life cycle. So we'll really be creating bespoke education modules for each of the applicants as, as we move forward. It won't be a sort of a group training environment. 
talking to who the actual eligible applicants are. So there are a number of, of requirements which you need to meet in order to be eligible to apply to participate in the program. Uh, Firstly, the activities which you're going to undertake as part of the program need to be predominantly based in Queensland. So it's really important that the activities that you're going to propose to undertake focus on, on being based in, in Queensland. Um, the business itself, so the applicant company, need to needs to be registered and, and based in Queensland. And additionally, 75% of the staff of your business, if you have got staff, need to be bona fide Queenslanders as well. Uh, Screen Queensland isn't able to contract with trusts as, as many of the, the state and federal agencies aren't able to. So you'll need to be a company or a partnership or a sole trader. And, and importantly, you'll need to actually have a, an Australian business number and be registered with an APN as well. Um, you'll need to have reportable credits in the platforms or genres for which you're applying for support. Um, and you'll need to also meet the Screen Queensland general eligibility requirements as set out in their terms of trade. And those terms of trade are available on, on the Screen Queensland website. In fact, most of the documents you'll need to refer back to are available on the on the actual enterprise page on the on the website. And lastly, the, the primary business activity of the applicant needs to actually relate to the development and production of original screen content. So in this instance, games, companies, post-producing companies, VFX or, or supply businesses which support the screen industry in Queensland aren't eligible if their primary activity isn't around that development and production of original screen content. So I just want to make that, that quite clear. In terms of other application requirements, um, there, there are a few things just to sort of be aware of. Any individuals that you're referring to or whose personal information is included in your application, they need to be aware that, that you're including that application. So please don't put in you know, any details of individuals um, without checking with them first. Um, there are a number of documents there, the Screen Queensland Terms of Trade, the Screen Queensland Qualifying Production Expenditure Definition, um, the Strategic Plan for 2023 to 2025 for Screen Queensland, uh, the Screen Diversity and in Inclusion Network Charter and the Screen Queensland Annual Review are all mandatory documents to sort of have had a read a read through and, and, and which you will need to agree to as, as part of the actual submission process. Again, all of those documents are available uh, with links on the Enterprise uh, page, so you'll be able to find them all there. Um, you'll also need to submit uh, financial accounts for your business for the financial year 22 and financial year 23. So that's for the six or 12 month period ending 30th of June, 2022 and ending 30th of June, 2023. Um, and they will need to be certified by your accountant. Uh, we understand that the FY23 year um, documentation is really just coming up to, to being needed to be submitted now, but um, presumably it'll be mostly in a draft form for most of you if you haven't already completed those. Um, but if it is still in draft form, you know, it just needs to be certified that from your accountant is going to be in, in ostensibly the, the form which will be submitted at the end of the financial year. And then lastly, we're going to require a three minute video or a video of up to three minutes, which will be part of the application process as, as well for you to, to have an opportunity to, to explain what your application is and to, and to talk to that, you know, with a little bit, um, you know, rather than just words on a page, you can sort of convince uh, that the assessors what, what it is that you're after as, as part of that. And I'll just chime in there. We're not judging you on your production values there. It's more just <laughs> getting to I hear from from you as opposed to the words on the page. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what sort of activities can be funded? Um, so as I said earlier, the, for, for emerging businesses or for, for businesses which are starting out, um, activities which are going to assist them with becoming financially viable and build their capabilities when it comes to, to working in the local and the global markets, um, any, any activities relating to those you know, are, are fine. Um, and again, we'll go through some of the specific exclusions in, in a moment. Um, and for more established businesses, the the types of activities we're, we're expecting to see being being uh, asked to be funded are things which are going to relate to them uh, growing the local screen production sector through some form of diversification or business initiative. So it's not, not business as usual, it's, it's trying to find a new pathway to, to markets and revenues um, in a way which will be sustainable, um, which, which will sit ideally alongside what your existing business practices are. So getting into the nitty gritty of that, this isn't an exhaustive list. It's just to give you an indication of the sorts of things which potentially could be funded. Um, but yeah, some, some ideas there just to get you started, getting some assistance and advice with regards to your company and, and business structuring, 
um, developing and, and executing strategies which are going to enhance your capabilities in the local or international markets, um, helping you to develop better relationships and connections to, to organizations or individuals who, who may help with financing of projects, um, anything around innovation or diversification of your business models, um, finding and engaging with uh, ex experts or, or consultants who, who've got expertise that you might you know, benefit from in, in, as you're going through the process of growing your business. And of course, finding and engaging staff to help you with your business growth and viability. And I think that that last one in particular will probably be of, of interest for most people when we're looking at the quantum of, of funding which is available. Um, funding which it you know is not intended to be for specific projects. So if you've got a particular project on your slate that you wanted to to um, to put funding towards, you'll still be able to access the Screen Queensland development funding outside of this the enterprise program. Um, but yeah, certainly funds from the enterprise program aren't intended to be put into specific projects on your slate. And it also um, the funding isn't able to be used for corporate infrastructure costs such as office space leasing or upgrades to your office or, or, or buildings or anything like that. Getting into the actual process of the application itself, um, it is a two-stage application process. Stage one is, is for, for everybody who meets those eligibility criteria we, we talked about earlier. Uh, but stage two will only be for those who've submitted the most competitive stage one application and they'll be invited to, to then progress on to stage two. The deadline for stage one is by 5 p.m. on Friday, the 22nd of March. And in order to, to meet that deadline, you'll need to have submitted those three things below. So you've filled out the Smarty Grants um, application in its entirety, submitted your three minute video pitch, and then provided those, those financial statements from, from your accountant. Um, at a minimum, we'll require the profit and loss. Ideally, we'd have the full financial pack for those two financial years. We will be making available, it's not there at the moment, but um, we will be putting up on the website a, a version of the Smarty Grants uh, questions in a Word format. So if you want to work offline on, on developing your application, you want to do that in Word, you can you can have a version there that you can work on on your desktop. Um, that can sometimes be a little bit easier to work on than, than, than logging into the Smarty Grants site and, and working in there. So, um, so yeah, we'll make that available. It's not up there right at the moment, but it'll be up there shortly. Um, so you can draft your submission in there and then you'll be able to copy and paste from that document into the Smarty Grants um, site. Just remember that formatting in Smarty Grants doesn't really um, hold as you sort of copy and paste from Word docs. It, it really just is a, a text-based field. So um, yeah, don't get too fancy with your formatting in your Word doc and you won't be able to sort of you know, submit any any diagrams or anything like that if you've if you built those in, in your um your Word documents. Um, but yes, you'll be advised by the close of business on, on Friday the 3rd of May, whether or not you've you've been declined or whether you're being invited to participate in stage two. And for those people who are going to be progressing onto stage two, you'll be sent a link to complete a second stage application and some other materials. Um, and stage two will very much focus on the details of the activities which you're being which you're proposing to to undertake as part of the program. So it gives you an opportunity to really get into uh, the nitty gritty of, of the specific activities that you want to, to actually apply the funding towards and, and what resources and, and so on you're going to be accessing as, as a consequence of, of the funding. I will just um, flag for you that stage two will be fairly quick. I mean, even though the actual requirements of what you need to supply is less than what's in stage one, you'll probably only have around four weeks to complete stage two. Um, we will be providing some additional support to, to assist you with that, that phase of the application if you're successful in moving through to stage two, though. So when we get to that stage, um, we'll be able to, to give you a little bit more um, hand-holding to, to get through that, that second phase of it, because we do recognise that it's going to be quite a, a short turnaround to, to get that, that done pretty much over, over May. Um, in terms of the assessment criteria, and this is really, really important for you to sort of pay attention to because, you know, this is this is ultimately what your applications will be measured against and, and you know, will we'll, uh, we'll determine whether or not you're going to get through. So there's, there's five criteria which we're assessing as, as we're looking at the applications. The first one is really around the strategy, whether the, whether the application and what you're proposing to undertake makes sense um, in the context of what your existing business focus is. Um, and the, the opportunities that you've identified in the marketplace and the objectives of the actual program. So all of those objectives we talked about the, at the very beginning, making sure there's a good alignment to, to those. 
Secondly, we want to make sure that the pro proposed activities are going to be viable. And by that, we mean that the business has actually, um, you've contemplated how you're going to be able to continue to undertake those activities beyond the terms of funding. What we don't want to do is to, to have uh, activities which are undertaken just for a short burst of, of time and then stop as soon as the funding stops. So we want to ensure that there is long-term viability from, from the activities and that they ideally are going to be able to provide um, cash flows and, and revenues which will make themselves sustaining over the longer term. Uh, thirdly, a diversity, equity, inclusion. We need to understand you know, how the proposed activities are meaningfully going to contribute towards fostering and promoting diversity, equity and, inclu and inclusion. And that's in the in the context of the the current state of the business and the broader industry. Um, from a capability and executability perspective, we need to understand that you've you've identified the resources and expertise that you need to be able to deliver those proposed activities, and how you're going to go about finding access to those resources and capabilities if you don't have them in house already. And then lastly, we wanted to you to talk to to the benefits to the industry. So how are the activities going to actually have a benefit for the ongoing? Um, future of, of the Queensland production industry, again, in line with the, with the objectives of the enterprise program. So those five assessment criteria, I'd really encourage you to sort of, you know, make yourselves very familiar with those. Again, they are on the website, um, but as you're writing your document, it, it would certainly be useful for you to sort of contemplate having those to one side as you're, as you're writing it and, and, and referring back to that on a regular basis. Last thing I'll talk to about uh, to you about before we sort of move on to to having some some questions and answers is around the actual terms of the funding itself. So if you are successful with the uh, with your application, then you will need to enter into a grant agreement with Screen Queensland. Those grant agreements will only be for a twelve month duration, but they may be renewed for up to another additional two years, so a total of three years. And I'll talk to that process in just a second, but. Um, the other thing which I'll just mention is the drawdowns, which will, you know, the timing of the drawdowns will, will be based around your application submission and the ap activities that you're proposing to undertake within that application. So they will be um, considered on, a, on an individual basis and, and the drawdown, their drawdowns will, will be tied to those. Uh, however, there, there will be across the board a, a requirement for interim reporting on a quarterly basis. Now, going back to that 12 month uh, contracting component and, and the renewal of it at the end of each 12 month of 12 month period the applicants and people who have been successful in, in moving through into the program will need to then come and present to screen queensland outlining how they progressed against their kpis within that year detailing what their planned activities for the subsequent year is and, and how they're going to be able to continue to move forward through the program and then if if they're deemed eligible then screen queensland will then sub move into to a subsequent agreement for a second or third year of financing at that point. So it really is a you know a matter of making sure that you've you've met those objectives and KPIs that you've you've set for yourself as you've moved forward. So I think that's it for the actual presentation. Um, what we might do now is to stop this chair and move into answering uh, any questions that you might have. Thanks, Ian. So yes, if you have any questions, just write them through on that chat. No questions yet? Well, we do have comprehensive frequently asked questions on our website um, and a thorough guidelines. And we've set up an enterprise email account so you can um, address any questions either to myself or to that one, which is enterprise at um, screenqld.com.au. There are just a couple of questions coming through on the Q&A here. So I might just answer a couple of these as we go. So is there a limit for how long a business needs to have been operational for? Um, no, when, when you're going through the actual application itself, um, you'll need to make sure that you, um, when you're answering the questions, which which are in there around, you know, whether you meet the criteria, um, that, that you, you need to, to make sure that you actually meet all of those criteria. But no, there's, there's not a, a limit for how long it needs to have actually operated for before you, you can apply. So if you want to, um, if you're, you're currently operating under a particular structure and you wanted to change that structure, for instance, if you're currently trading as a trust and you wanted to register as a business, you're welcome to do so between now and the time that you actually apply. 
Um, I've got a question here. If prop hire business um, are classified as a service-based business, um, in this case they are. We're really focusing on um, the, the generation of local IP um, and, and the storytelling of production. I think that's really important that, you know, at the point that you're applying, you need to make those undertakings that, that the business meets the criteria. And, and one of those criteria at the moment for this application is that, the, you know, the core business and what you're actually doing at the moment relates to original content production. So if you're working in a different field, for instance, a design company who supplies screen that wants to move into that space, um, you wouldn't be eligible at the moment if that's not your core business. It, if if the, in future years, if the if Screen Queensland is is able to run this program again, and you want to apply at some point in the future, then you know you'd want, want to make sure that that you'd shifted your business focus between now and and that subsequent application period that that became your your core competency of what your business was actually doing. Uh, there's a question here about saying when we refer to diversity, does that include regional employees and women? Uh, yes, of course, um, and we have. Uh, a definition of diversity, but it's mostly underrepresented groups, but also it can be within your business or the stories that you're telling. So it's 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 up to you with how you um, are reflecting that diversity within your business or the production slates that you have. Um, it's it's quite open. Yep. Um, can we get a copy of the recording of the webinar? Absolutely. That will be available for people um, for a period of time. Yeah, we'll be available in a few days because we're going to have it captioned. So in a few days' time, you'll have that available. And in terms of um, the preview application form, when will that be available? You can actually get into the Smarty Grants um, form now. You can you can open up an application and access that straight away. Um, that form is is in is the form that you will actually be be applying under. In terms of the Word document, we'll have that up on the website over the next few days. It's exactly the same as the Smarty Grants. Um, question which are in there though so there's nothing to stop you from getting in and, and familiarizing yourself with the questions and the categories of, of what you actually need to to be looking at there's a question here about how many grants will be given for for the enterprise so at the moment it's um, a three million dollar fund and that's a million per year uh, you can request up to one hundred and fifty thousand. so mathematically that's like six at 150 and one at 100 we, we don't know what um, applications are, are going to come our way, but it could be anywhere from six to seven companies, or if the if the money request was less, it could be more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, conflicts of interest, how will they be handled? So there's a, a fairly clear conflict of interest process which which Screen Queensland has, which you know in, in which if a conflict of interest exists, then then um, they're identified and 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 anybody who's required to um, to recuse himself from being involved with that particular company can, can do so. I'm just reading this scripted and unscripted production. Yes, both are eligible. Um, for a new business owner, if you haven't got the FY22 and FY23 financial reports, uh, that's fine. That's, you know, we, we understand that um, if you have a business which hasn't been operating for that long, that obviously you won't have those. So yes, that will be taken on a case by case basis. Is if it, the, those requirements are there for, for businesses which have been established for, for long enough to have those, um, those financial reports available. Um, does reportable credits refer to produced credits rather than IP in development? I mean, it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis, but basically the activity that you propose to use the business enterprise funding for, we'd be looking at does your team have the capabilities and the competences to, to um, bring that to fruition and whether that's perhaps even employing a staff member with the enterprise uh, money that could satisfy that, but we we really want to make sure that we um, are selecting businesses and the principals and the key creatives along with that um, that can really achieve what the proposed activity is. Um, interesting question there, Aranya. Can you apply for more than one idea for your company? Um, and should you, we speak to you in advance? But look, certainly when it comes to applying for more than one idea. Yeah, you can only submit submit one application for each company. Um, so, you know, in in order to be competitive, you really probably want to focus in on on the activity or activities which you intend to actually do with the funding. It's not that you only need to do one activity with the funding. You absolutely can do multiple activities with funding, and 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 probably would be expected that 
for for many businesses they would be splitting their funding over over a number of, of different activities um so yeah if you if if you're talking about that then uh, yes you know by by all means, outline what the activities that you want to, to undertake are, and it's fine for there to be multiple ones. But if you mean, can we apply for two completely different things as two applications? No, it'll just be one one application per, per company. Uh, there's a question here. If you're successful in securing enterprise, does that preclude you from applying for other funds, such as market travel? No, of course not. Um, because our business enterprise isn't focused on production funding or development funding, if you're successful, you are eligible to apply for our general core business activities, which which um, include market travel development and uh, production funding. And there was another one here, a project written and produced by Queenslanders adapted from work outside of Queensland, ineligible as part of a strategy. No, not at all. We recognise that stories come from anywhere. Um, but what should be noted is that the activity that you're proposing to be used for the enterprise money isn't to be um, focused on a project. It's rather how are you building your company or what staff are you employing to get to where you need to go or how are you diversifying your um, already established company. Um, one thing which has come up a couple of times here is the difference between, you know, what's an emerging versus an established business. Uh, look, this isn't a defined term, and certainly you don't need to identify in your application as to whether you're an emerging or an established business. Um, I suppose as we're looking at the actual applications themselves and the, the specifics of each business, um, you know, if, if you have a business which has been in operation for a number of years and which is, you know, somebody who's who's actively been participating in this green Queensland uh, sorry, in, this, in the Queensland production environment for for a while we, we would treat that as being a more established business um, and we'd be looking for for you know how you're going to innovate from from what your current business activities are whereas a business which has has not been around for for a number of years for for many years and, and which hasn't been an active participant in the same way as as um you know businesses which are um, which are known and 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 which are you know active participants would be you know seen as being more emerging, but it's not a defined term and and there's certainly no specific um, requirements to sort of you know fill out different parts of the form depending on which one you are. Um, can you establish a Queensland branch of an existing Australian company, reflecting expansion to Queensland and qualify? Not at the moment, so the it's what your business is today in terms of eligibility so you need to have that Queensland base and be registered in Queensland as you apply today as opposed to if I get the money and then I can employ this staff then maybe I'll be eligible yeah um uh, here's another one I'm an Oh, sorry, I just went away. <laughs> I'm an emerging screen business with a focus on mostly web and online. Can I apply? Yeah, you can apply. I mean, we're looking at um, screen businesses. Um, with regards to the original content IP, does the content have to be a Queensland story and does it have to be shot in Queensland? And can the project be a story outside of Queensland and Australia, but have to have the Queensland team work on it? Well, yeah, look, really what we're looking for here is any form of, of intellectual property, which is originated and, and retained and owned in Queensland. So it, it doesn't have to be a Queensland story per se. Um, it can be any form of, of IP, um, but really we're, we're just looking to, to try to support the, the Queensland production sector in terms of owning and retaining and growing the IP, which they're, they're getting value from over in the future. Um, if you've uh, previously received enterprise funding from um, Screen Queensland or Screen Australia, uh, the question is, will that hinder your application? No, not at all. Um, you may realise that Screen Oz is also uh, running an enterprise program at the moment. I think their applications are due in a, in a few weeks' time. Um, in terms of asking money for the same activity from both companies um, will be, you know, alive and aware to that. Um, but no, you could apply and be successful in both. 
Um, and somebody was asking, they were saying that they're internationally or business which does a lot of work in the international sector um, and, and are they still able to apply if they're based in Queensland? Look, again, the majority of the activities you're undertaking as part of the enterprise program have to happen in Queensland. So, so long as you're confident that the activities which you will be undertaking as a consequence of the enterprise program um, are, are Queensland-based activities, then then you're you're still eligible. Um, how long is the application form and what types of information will be required? So you can preview and, and actually start filling out the form on Smarty Grants and you can open a Smarty Grants for, uh, for submission um, and you don't actually have to put submit. You can you can work on it on and off. Um, what we've done is I think there's about seven or eight questions and they all have word limits on them. So I think the the largest one is 1500 words and that is the one which where you detail your activity that you would use with the funding for enterprise. The other information aside from those questions and we'll put the word document up as Ian um, mentioned if you want to work on it offline uh, are general questions about who the principals of the company are um you know where where you're based, um, what electorate, just general sort of things that the government asks for. Um, I think we've kind of talked this a little bit, but yeah, is stage two a short list or an acceptance notion? Stage two is just just a short list still. So so you you'll still be it will still be a competitive process to get get through stage two. Um, and certainly not all of the people who progress to stage two will will finally be accepted. Uh, we have one about previous successful companies had in common. Well, we haven't run an enterprise program like this for a while. Um, before I began here and with a whole different team and a whole different CEO, um, there was an enterprise funding scheme, I think, in the in the COVID era. Uh, but I can't talk to that. I mean, Ian might be able to talk to Screen Oz, but they also have a different strategy than what Screen Queensland has. I suppose, yeah, just on that, this this program, you know, has been designed specifically for the objectives outlined that we talked to earlier, and, and they are different from, from you know, previous iterations of, of both the Screen Queensland Enterprise and, and other enterprise programs. So, um, so yeah, it's a little bit difficult to compare apples with oranges in, in this instance. Um, and, you know, really encourage you to familiarize yourself with the assessment criteria and, and what you'll actually be assessed against when in, in this particular application because that's that's ultimately what will make a successful application. There's a question here about the acknowledgement of skill shortages such as um, entertainment lawyers, line producers. Um, and the question is, is it possible to utilize that enterprise funding to hire staff for that key position, but they're not Queensland based? Yes, we're open to that. We do realize that to grow companies, um, sometimes you need the best experience and the best personnel, and they're not going to be necessarily available in Queensland. And that's something that we actually want to address. We want to make sure that we do have over time enough of um, of all different practitioners in different areas of businesses who, who are able to um to form part of production companies and services but for now yes if it was exactly the right fit yeah we're open to that yeah um there's another one about line if you're a line producer and you have credits are you able to set up a company um and do those credits translate uh, yeah, of course. Um, but again, it would probably come down to without knowing uh, the the detail of that question. Um, is there an alignment to things you have worked on and, and where you're heading with this with with your business? Yeah. Um, what kinds of materials will be required at stage two? Um, it'll just be a, a written materials for stage two. Um, so no further videos required. We only have to yeah have to go through that pain once. Um, but uh, it'll be it'll be a, a lesser uh, requirement in terms of the actual um, volume of, of words on a page. Um, and as I say, we're very specifically drilling into the activities which you want to then undertake with the um, with the enterprise funding itself. While stage one is a slightly broader application where you're explaining a bit more about your business and, and the principles and, and who you are and what you've been doing. Um, the stage two will really just be focusing in on on those activities which will be funded with the with the enterprise funds.
there's a question about a sole traders eligible. Yes, yes, you are. Um, there have been instances I know in Screen Australia where perhaps two two um, very established practitioners come together to form a company. Um, and that was eligible because of all the experience uh, that they had and where they were channeling together in their, in their direction. But yes, sole, uh, sole traders are eligible. Um, is it realistic to apply for the full 150,000 if it meets requirements? Yes, um, absolutely. I mean, what we would encourage you to do is to, to contemplate what activities you want to undertake. And, and do some some budgeting to figure out what it's going to cost for you to actually be able to access that those resources and to and to um, undertake those activities and then make sure that the ask you know marries up to 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 that work that you've done around that so um you know just applying blanket for 150,000 without sort of contemplating how it how it relates to your activities probably wouldn't be as competitive but if if the activities you undertake um do you know come up to that full quantum then then there's nothing to stop you from from getting that there's a question about if your credits are in factual and you want to move into scripted, will your credits be eligible? Yeah, they they would be. And we'd be looking at it. What's the scaffolding that you have around ensuring that your move into scripted um, will be successful? So we would be looking at the experience of, of um, your credits to date uh, as a practitioner and what, yeah, what people are you working with or, or what your strategy is there. Um, if you're asking for 100,000 this year, if successful, can we ask for 150 in subsequent years or does it have to be the same for every year? Um, no, the, the the contracting is only for the 12 month period and then for the subsequent period, we'll be looking to understand what activities you'd be undertaking in the subsequent 12 months, which may be an increase in activities, may be a decrease in activities. And so, you know, uh, year to year, um, feasibly, you could have a variance to to the actual amount that you are you are applying for, um, so long as again it, it related to the activities you're undertaking and that there was a good alignment um, between you know the, what you've been doing in that first year onto the second year and and that you were meaningfully growing those activities. Um, if you were successful in other funding from SQ, such as She Doc, are you eligible? Yes, um, they're separate programs with different. Um, strategies um around them they're they're distinct so there's there's no crossover there and there's another question about in the case of sole traders coming together to form a company would the company need to be established before the application or would one or both apply as a sole trader well it's it comes down to um, on the application there's these tick boxes um, that you're kind of warranting who you are when applying. So if the company hasn't been established at the point of application, but the sole trader is available, I would say apply as the sole trader and talk about your plan to bring people on. Um, question there about can the money be used for business establishment, for example, website builds? Uh, so business establishment's a little bit of a, a loaded term. So um, you know, if we're taking the specific example of a website build, um, if it's yeah, if if the part of the activities you're undertaking is to increase your market presence and reputation and 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 to engage in a bunch of marketing activities which will help you to engage better domestically and internationally, absolutely, that's a that's a valid use of funds. Um, actual business establishment costs in terms of corporate establishment, no, um, because the business would need to be established before you even applied. Um, and again, just to, to reiterate that, you know, we can't use it for corporate infrastructure costs like, you know, office um, related activities. Um, so yeah, just be, uh, be a bit wary of, of, you know, saying for, for business establishment activities, but certainly for website builds, if you, if it made sense and you'd drawn the, the correlation between the need to have that with the activities and the, and where your position in the market is at the moment, that would be fine. Will the program run again in 2025? Well, yes, that is our ambition and our aim. But at the moment, we have funding for the this three-year program. Um, and as we said, a lot of it comes down to, you know, at the end of the first year, you don't automatically get the second and third year funding because we're seeing how you're tracking against um, 
what you had planned to do with the enterprise funding. And that's going to come into play of whether we are successful in, in um, obtaining more money from government because it will come down to the metrics and the success. So that's why we've built these things into it because we would love to keep running these programs. Yeah. Um, if a business is looking to further translation uh, transition from working as a supplier into IP creation, would they be considered for the program? Again, at the time of application, you need to you know undertake that your core business um, activities are around original content um, creation and development. So if if that's not something which your business is already doing, then no, we wouldn't be able to to consider that at, at this point. But again, if you were to make that transition now and there were a subsequent version of the program, then you may be eligible then. I think this might be a joint answering from myself and Ian. Um, on the note of funding over three years, should the application focus on the activities for the first year, um, or are you expecting the application to include a three-year period? Well, the view that I have uh, from the SQ perspective on that is we want to ensure that once the money you know stops, that the company is viable. Um, so that's number one. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on that, Ian? Yeah, I think stage one application, absolutely, you know, we probably want to understand what you are going to do over a three year period. Stage two will be drilling down into into really that first year of it in a lot more detail. But in terms of the stage one application, we'd encourage you to to contemplate activities you know, that, that would occur over three years, understanding that obviously as we move down the track, things are going to change. That's part of why we have that sort of process each year to be able to to review how things are progressing and to understand what's changed and, and give people the opportunity to to reapply for the subsequent year and to, to, to potentially, you know, refocus what, what they're actually um engaging in, in in years two and year three but but certainly you know activities which you're undertaking as part of your stage one application we would we would encourage you to think about that over the longer term and things which can have some longevity um, and ideally run for for three years are we going to be judged on how much revenue we've made um in the financial years there were no losses in the income were mostly grants does that make us less or more attractive um, what we're looking at in those financials is, is part of the um, proposal that you have for the enterprise funding. I guess we're looking at if you wanted to hire staff, it, we can see, yes, that, that that makes sense. Or if you're not being paid yourself, yeah, there's, there's an issue here. How can we make you be in that business um, permanently? So it, it, there's, there's no judgment in terms of yes or no. It's just getting a view of the landscape of, of how you know where your costs are, where your profits are, um, what revenue channels you have, and is the enterprise activity that you're proposing is kind of going to align to, to, to that and grow your business. I apply as an individual, even though I work for a company, but the application intention is to create a new separate company. Um, again, you want to apply with whatever entity you're actually going to be undertaking the activities within. Um, so if if you are planning on setting up your own business um, or if you're going to, to apply as a sole trader because you're, you're setting up something new, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, and there's nothing yet yeah, from... from there would nothing be nothing to stop you from from applying even if you are working for somebody else at the moment just remember it will be a, a heavily competitive round and you know that there, there there won't be a, a huge number of, of businesses which will be funded from this so um so i'd encourage you to sort of contemplate that that you know that that anything that you're going to put forward needs to to make sense and and, and um and really you know cut through uh from from a from a the activities you're undertaking from that perspective. Uh, this one um, is the grant. Is there a, an acquittal for the grant and does it require an external audit? And does the enterprise funding include a fee for the grant acquittal? Well, our general terms of trade give us um, an ability to ask for an audit. I, 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 um, I don't think we would request an audit unless there was reason to request one. Um, but in terms of does the enterprise funding include the fee for, for getting your materials? Well, that to us is business as usual activity. What are your thoughts on that, Ian? Uh, 
Yeah. Um, I think, sorry, I'm just trying to find it. It's, 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 um, is the grant acquit an acquittal? Does it require an external audit? And does the funding include a fee for the grant acquittal? No, that, that there will be a quarterly acquittal process where you'll be reporting against what what you've you know undertaken in that quarterly process over, over that quarter. Um, but there's there's no requirement as part of that to have that externally audited or any costs involved in in doing that. So so there's no fees associated. There's a question there around you know if company directors are not all Queensland based but staff will be are we still eligible? Again, I'd encourage you to go back to those initial eligibility requirements. So you know the, the company needs to be a Queensland based company. Um, Seventy five percent of all staff need to be bona fide Queensland um, uh, Queenslanders. So um, so it, it it's not necessarily around where the company's the directors are, are located and so on. It's it's really just making sure that you meet those those criteria as, as is quite clearly articulated in the eligibility part of the um of the of the of the documentation. Uh, there's a question here: If we have specific ideas, can we run it by someone at SQ before applying, um, so we can be sure we fit the criteria? Yes, we we are available um, to answer those questions, and also we do have that email as well at enterprise at screenqld.com.au, and you can ask some questions there. And we do have um, so the, the FAQs, which are pretty comprehensive on the website. Um, who are assessing the applications into our external parties? It's, it's a combination of both. So there will be internal and external assessors reviewing uh, the applications. Is there a weighting towards demonstrating local employment growth opportunity versus market growth? No, it depends on your business proposal and the people behind it and your company's um, vision and, and, and trajectory of where you're going. In terms of hiring staff from interstate, does that mean the activity would need to relocate to take place in Queensland? No, not necessarily. And it would depend on the on the position, of course. I mean, is there an actual shortage uh, in Queensland and, and you, you can't you can't get that position elsewhere, or is that person exactly the right fit? Um, again, coming back to all our priorities, it's about uh, growing the local screen business, uh, but also creating opportunities for Queensland practitioners. Um, we're just reading through the <laughs> questions. It's mostly done there. Uh, there's one about can we use it for extra editors um, and equipment because um, it's not meant to be for assets or infrastructure. Well, extra editors are, are, are staff, so so they, that's a yes. Yep. Um, if you're successful but your strategy changes due to um, responding to, you know, a changing market, does that mean you're not eligible for further years of funding? No, not at all. But we have those quarterly check-ins, as we said, for, for those successful recipients. So we would be aware of what's going on, as would you. Um, so, so no, that, that is fine. Is international travel eligible as part of the enterprise program? So can you apply for international travel? Look, again, you're not excluded from um, from other um, grant grant programs which are which are being run so you know probably encourage you to to go to those places in the first instance um as, as part of of um any funding which you require for international travel if it was for something which wasn't going to be covered by a grant then then we could absolutely look at that if it made sense in the context of, of what it was you were doing in the application and the and the activities that, that you were proposing to undertake What's the purpose of supplying financial statements? Is profitability over the recent period part of the eligibility criteria? No, it's it's not. Profitability is not a, um, a criteria. Um, the purpose is so we can get an understanding of the request that you're how you're going to actually spend the one hundred and fifty. So we can see if um, 
if that makes sense um, and is aligned to your strategy because uh, one of the strategic objectives for us is to create a commercially viable companies, um, you know, that that don't that don't end because the enterprise funding ends in three years' time. So it's to give us a snapshot and to give yourself a snapshot to see where you're at and what you need to, to get to where you want to get to. Um, and if the company doesn't have any current staff, can the engagement of staff be a good ask for this fund? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't have any current staff and, and you're just currently a, a, a solo operator, be that a, a sole trader or a company with, with a, a single director, um, and you wanted to to use the funding to in, engage staff and that was aligned with the activities you wanted to undertake, then yes, that would be a good use of funds. Mm. Upskilling a valid use of funds, whether for staff or founders. Yes. If again, look, any anything which is going to help your business, you know, be more competitive um in the in the local and, and global marketplace and, and which is going to, you know, align with a, a an a outcome that you've been able to articulate in your application, which is going to to help with the meet the objectives of the program, um, then then that would be a valid use of funding. And if, if that, that can extend to, to upskilling and, and for, for staff and founders. Uh, this one might be for you, Ian. As a newly established entity, what replaces the end of financial year accounts? Yeah. So again, for if, if you don't have end of financial year accounts because you haven't don't don't have them, then then obviously then there's no requirement to to supply those. It's really only for businesses which have been trading for a number of years that we're looking to to understand what what that trajectory they've been on. Currently have <laughs> I was just going to say, what type of activities do you want to see Queensland companies engage in? Um, we do have a, a, a list of, um, you know, suggested activities, but it's not an exhaustive list. Um, we, we want to see companies engage in activity that's going to grow their business and it's aligned to their strategic, their own strategic plan. So wherever you're heading as a business, um, you know, align those activities to that. So I'd really encourage you to to grab that you know page of objectives which have already been articulated in, in this presentation, which are on the and also on the on the website. So so have a look at what the program objectives are, and then have a look at the at the assessment criteria and use those two as your guidelines really to to as you're answering questions, make sure that that you know when you've answered a question that they make sense in both those contexts that you feel like you've actually met the objectives of of the program and that that your answer you know is is easily understood in the context of how it will be assessed um and just to clarify is it just production companies who are eligible well it's sole traders production companies but screen businesses um those that are creating stories and productions and and are developing ip okay Okay. That's the last couple of ones there. So yeah. Anything else? If anyone has any other questions, type them in. If you're applying for a new employee that you've you want to help grow the business and you um do you need to have that person already picked and included, or can you source them if funded um look it, it again it comes down to the to the individual application there's there's no requirement to have that individual identified as part of the process in fact you might want to actually go through a recruitment process or something like that to, to help find that right person um the the strength of the application will, will really be on the basis of of you know describing what that person is doing and, and how they're going to contribute to to the overarching strategy that you're describing for your business um, but yeah, you don't need to to necessarily identify that person. Um, if it's for a very specific role where it makes sense to identify somebody in advance, it might strengthen it, but it's not an absolute requirement. Question here, what about developing IP for use within or by other screen businesses? Well, the enterprise funding isn't to be used for slate funding or for developing IP because we already have those um, funding streams available Um separate to business enterprise. So um, I don't think 
that's really relevant in this case. And similar, can we use the funds to acquire IP? Um, no, it's it's the 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 intent of the funding isn't to 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 go into the actual into individual projects on a development slate. So no, we would not expect it to be for acquiring any IP. Um, and if it's not for developing slate of projects, then why would you want to hire an editor? That would need to be a case that you would need to explain to us as to why you would want to hire an editor, and presumably it'd be um, based around an, an activity which you felt would, was going to, to strengthen your business in some way. Um, but it, it just wouldn't be related, as, as we say, it can't be specifically tied to a, a given project. Well, it looks like that is the end of the questions. Um, as mentioned, we will have this available um, as a recording. We're just going to have it captioned. Um, so it should be available early next week. Um, we have the enterprise email, which is enterprise at screenqld.com.au. Um, and you can contact the content team for any other questions. Um, Otherwise, it was six weeks from last Friday, which you have for the application process. So that's the 22nd of March, which it's um, closing. And then it's about a six week assessment process. And then you'll be notified whether you um, are invited to apply to stage two. And we won't be giving feedback for um, if you weren't successful there. Any other thoughts, Ian? I think, um, look, I really would encourage you, as I say, to to sort of read the guidelines as, as you know in in detail, um, and to to really uh, you know familiarise yourselves with both the objectives and the and the assessment criteria, because they're the the two things which are going to to really allow you to craft a, the best application that you can. Yeah, and we're excited about about this program. So I hope everyone is too. We've had over a hundred registrations for this um for this recording. And I saw that there was over 70 questions. So obviously you're all excited as well. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks so much.